potatoes. Potatoes. We're eating nothing but potatoes all day at Universal Studios Orlando. Come with us. Hey club, it's Molly and Alan today. We're at Universal Studios. Our followers challenged us to eat nothing but potatoes for an entire day, and it turns out there's a bunch of really good potato-based snacks at Universal, so challenge accepted. We're going to bring you along today, have some of the best snacks, we're going to do some rides, some other shenanigans. It's going to be spud-tacular. Spud-tastic. You're going to be ready to say potato no more puns. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Our first stop on our potato journey today, breakfast potatoes from Green Eggs and Ham. I've never had these though. Are oh. they good? Oh my gosh, they're amazing. Okay. They're one of my favorite snacks in all of Universal here at the Green Eggs and Ham Tater Tots and Who Hash Stand in Seuss Landing. Now I'm saying it's breakfast because there are eggs involved, but you can have these any time of day. Here at Green Eggs and Ham, they specialize in tots. Tater Tots are potatoes last time I checked. Accurate, that is correct. And uh, they have a variety of different flavors. They have pizza tots, buffalo chicken tots. They have who hash, which actually comes carnitas in a can. Tots? Yeah, new carnitas tots. What? But their signature dish, of course, is the green eggs and ham tots. So that's what we're kicking this off with. Here they are, the most glorious treat in all of Seuss Landing, the green eggs and ham. So you've got tater tots, which is our potato, and they're covered in a white cheese fondue, eggs with chives in them, which is what makes them green, and some ham, of course. Oh, yeah. Look at all that Canadian bacon. Look at that. Potato cheers. Bing. Mm. Mm. They never disappoint. You need to pack your patient pants because they are made to order, but I promise they are worth it. They are so good. I love the salty ham. I obviously love the white cheddar creamy fondue. What do you think? Incredible, right? The, the potatoes themselves are incredibly crispy, but light on the inside to where you actually get a nice crunch, but it's not all the way through like overcooked tots could be. And they're actually a really good size too. And here's the kicker. The eggs are bomb. Yeah. They are fluffy. They have just the right amount of chive. You would not expect to get eggs in a theme park that were this good. I agree. This dish is simple, but amazing. Truly one of my favorite snacks in all of Universal. Not mad at all that we have to eat it for the potato challenge. We're ranking these dishes on a spud scale of one to 10 spuds. It's scientifically proven to be the best way to find the best potato. Yep. It is the only way. Yeah. So what are you ranking it? I'm going big. I don't think we're going to top the green eggs and ham, nine spuds. I, nine spuds? I think this is near perfection, the best thing we're gonna eat all day. I mean, I think it's good. I'm gonna give it eight spuds. Okay, still strong. It's mine, it's mine. Bye, bye. Those potatoes were so good. Yeah, those are probably the best tater tots I've ever had. Oh, absolutely. Those have to be made like in house, right? I mean, they're there's, so fluffy. They're fluffy, they're bigger than what I would normally expect. Ugh. I don't know if we're going to get something that tops that. I'm telling you. You mean tops that? <laughs> nice. Um, can I tell you one of my favorite fun facts about Care uh, Seuss Landing? Sure. Do you see how the trees are all wonky? I do. Well, everything in the land, nothing has straight lines, just like in the world of Dr. Seuss. And these trees were actually warped in Hurricane Andrew in South Florida by the winds. And these are real palm trees that Universal went and rescued after the hurricane and planted here so they could keep thriving. But none of them are straight up and down. That's amazing. It's like my favorite fun fact ever. Love that. How about a ride before we eat more potatoes? I could do a ride. Do you want to do like the carousel? What about one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish? Is that a yes? I have trust issues because of this ride, but fine. <clears throat> anyway. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. It's a terrible ride here in Seuss Landing. I'm just kidding. It's a Dumbo inspired spinner. It's actually probably the best ones of these outside of Dumbo because it's a little game. It's a game? It sings you a song and you, depending on which fish you're in, yeah. so if you're in the red fish, it'll say like, red fish go up, blue fish go down. And if you don't listen to him, you'll get wet. It's a game, so I don't understand why you hate it. Because 
last time I rode this ride, I listened. I followed the rules and I still got wet. I listened to the instructions and I still got wet. No. Okay. It taught me to never follow the rules again. I don't know if that's the lesson. We're one fish. One fish. So we have to listen when it says one fish. I will practice my best listening skills. Yeah, because we do not want to get wet. Right. I'm on the outside. That's where the water's coming from. Your fish ride is now beginning. Stay dry. Oh, where to next? We could go to Jurassic Park. Ooh, chili cheese fries, Isla Nublar IPAs. Mm, or Harry Potter. Three broomsticks, some roasted potatoes, some hogshead brews. So what I'm hearing you say is we have the opportunity to try some craft beers with our potatoes? Yeah, I think this is now the time when we introduce our craft beer and potato pairing. A truly epic pairing. Uh, I'm leaving Harry Potter. Okay, yeah. Craft beer and potato pairings. The content nobody asked for, but we're making anyway. Accio beer. And potatoes. Oh yeah, that is, yep, yes, potatoes. <clears throat> we got in line for the three broomsticks, which is the restaurant on the Hogsmeade side of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Inside you can find traditional fare like fish and chips. Lovely big golden chips with a nice piece of fried fish. Beef pasties and my personal favorite, the Great Feast, which comes with rotisserie chicken, mac and cheese, and some corn. It's corn. And ribs. And rib. Oh right, can't forget the ribs. As you can see, there's a short line right now. It is peak lunchtime. It's 12 10. Uh, if you've watched other videos of mine, you know I recommend either I'd eating breakfast here, if you want to try the breakfast fair, or coming on off-peak meal time. So like early, early lunch or late lunch, early dinner is usually a better time, but the line's moving pretty quick. While we're in line, I have a question for you. If you had to recruit one witch or wizard to help you in the fight against Voldemort, and you can't pick Harry Potter, who you pick out? Albus Dumbledore. Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore. No, I think that's the wrong answer. Uh, astounding. Who, who are you picking? McGonagall! Oh, I do love McGonagall. She's a bad witch. She is hashtag boss witch energy. Yeah. And she's sassy. Oh, thank you for that assessment. And I feel like she could like scold him into behaving better. Yeah, that like if, would surely work. If if Lord Voldemort had gone to school with McGonagall as the teacher, none of this would have happened. You're right. She did inherit the transfiguration from Dumbledore. Yeah, so she wasn't there, and she could have like just scolded him into behaving better. That certainly would work. I see no flaws in this logic. I, I solved it. It only took us about five minutes in the outdoor portion of the queue to be allowed inside. Now this restaurant can get a little confusing because sometimes it operates like a standard quick service restaurant where you order your food up at the counter, uh, get it, and then find a table. Sometimes you order your food and then they send it to your table. Sometimes you can mobile order, but right now it looks like they are having you order, give you your food, and then you find a table. You know what I've always wanted on a 90 degree day? A nice cold beer? No, hot dairy-based soup. For our potato haul at the Three Broomsticks, we have got the signature roasted garlic potatoes. We got them just as a side, under $4.50 before a discount. We love a good snack value. We also, to Alan's delight, do have a bowl of hot dairy-based soup. This is their leek and potato soup. You can do it all on its own like we did, or you can do a soup and salad combo. And last but certainly not least, if you know me, you know I love a craft beer at a theme park that you can't get anywhere else, and there's several in the Wizarding World. Vanna White here is modeling the Hogshead Brew, which is a Scottish Amber Ale, only available here on the Hogsmeade side. And then I am drinking the Dragon Scale, which is a Vienna-style lager that you can get in both parts of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The first up is the potato leek soup. So warm. Good texture. Potatoes really make it um, make the body really nice, and the leeks are present. I mean, it's, it tastes like a muted onion. Overall, a really good soup. 
I've just been impressed with Universal's foods today. Um, don't know if I love it on a hot day, but pretty darn good soup. When I think theme park foods, soup doesn't hit the list. I mean, you're right. Now the hogs and brew. You can get a lot of that ale. It's so ales are typically a little bit sharper in their flavor. Uh, this is very much that, but it mutes itself quite nicely. Very refreshing. Medium body. So it's not going to be super light. We're not getting a light beer there, but it's just a really good and refreshing beer. Is it pairing well with your soup? It is because it cuts through a lot of the richness of what you're getting with potatoes and leeks. So I like the pairing. Um, I'd like to. I'd like just the beer, but we've got soup. So here we go. I'm trying the roasted potatoes. They're garlic. This feels unfair. It's almost like I planned it this way. These potatoes are so good, and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There is a little bit of onion in there. They're very garlicky. Rosemary's a really strong flavor as well. These are definitely more elevated than getting fries or chips, which, spoiler alert, we're gonna get over the other part of Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but the roasted potatoes are A+, plus, and I love that you can just grab them as a side for an easy and hearty snack. Now, for the dragon scale. Delicious. This is my personal favorite of the Wizarding World beers um, because it's the lightest one. It's certainly not a super light beer like a lager like you get in domestic fashion. It's a bump up from that, so you do have to like the taste of beer. I'd almost liken it to like a little bit stronger or heavier Heineken. But it is still the lightest of the beers, so someone who prefers a lighter beer, this is my favorite Wizarding World beer. But you know what? I love a craft beer theme to where we are, so cheers. Do I think these two things are pairing well? I think I like potatoes and I think I like beer and I'm happy to be consuming them both. Spud scale. Uh, what are you rating the soup? I'm gonna give the soup like a 5-5. Five, five. It was a good soup, but it's not something I would go out of my way to get uh, again. Yeah, I tend to agree. I'm gonna give it a 5-8. I like the flavors. I think it's a good soup. Mm, good soup. Good soup. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting pick on a hot day. What about the roasted potatoes? I'm gonna give the roasted potatoes a 7.1 on the spud scale. I like the rosemary, I like the garlic, I love the little onion, and I think it's a more elevated side compared to some of the other potato dishes we're gonna have. Oh, for sure, that's fair. I'm gonna give them a 6.5, and I agree with you about all of the flavors. What threw me off is that the cooking was just a touch uneven. Saying goodbye to the Wizarding World for now. We'll be back to the other Wizarding World in a moment. But for now, it's time to go to Jurassic Park. Ugh, chills with the music? Oh my gosh. What do they got in there, King Kong? What do they got in there, King Kong? L literally, yeah, there's a ride called Kong. Did you know that was screen use? I did not. That's very cool. That one and the one down by River Adventure were both used in the films, which I love. I don't know that we're ready for more potatoes, but are you ready to maybe meet a raptor? Oh yeah. Always ready to meet a raptor. Raptor Encounter is one of my favorite meet and greets of all time. It's here in the Jurassic World section of Islands of Adventure, and you're going to either meet a big raptor, like Blue, or a baby raptor. And it is such a fun and interactive meet and greet. I adore it. The whole world travelers arrive. We love the locals. When I say we love the locals, we love the locals. You're making a, a, well, a true mistake here. Yeah, eye contact in Blue's world is like picking a fight. So when you walked upstairs, you're picking a fight. Yeah. Yeah, don't pick a fight. There we go. Don't move, please. Just look over here at Kenny. Yeah, you said you do not want to pick a fight, yes? then you're going to want to apologize to Blue. Oh! Okay, let's get out of there. <laughs> I knew she was going to be there when I turned around, but she was so close to us. Thank you. <laughs> very, very close. I just love that meet and greet. I think it's so fun. And what's going to happen is this. You're going to watch a bunch of adults go up there and get scared of a velociraptor, and you're going to be like those dumb idiots. And then you're going to get scared. It's true. It's so much fun. Oh, I love it. All right, uh, you know what? More potato time? More potato time. Spud's the word. 
Hot tip, we placed a mobile order at the Burger Digs, which is inside of Jurassic Park Discovery Center, uh, so we can go pick up our potatoes. What did we get? We got some chili cheese fries and my favorite specialty craft beer in all of Universal. Ooh! Because we mobile ordered, we get to walk right up and pick it up without waiting in the line. So anywhere there's mobile order, take advantage of it. Uh, and what we got here, you can get at a lot of places, but this is my favorite of the quick service restaurants outside the Harry Potter one. So obviously we had to come in here. This building is modeled after the Welcome Center in the original Jurassic Park. So I just love eating in here because you've got the T-Rex skeleton. You've got some other skeletons. If you want to go downstairs, there's some interactive activities that are fun for the kids. You've got a pterodactyl up there. So as a Jurassic Park fan, I just love eating in this building. Ooh, the condiment bar is back. Last time I was here, it was still service up at the counter, but good to know. The other reason I like eating here, even though Burger Digs is kind of simple theme park food, as you can imagine, it's burgers. The burgers are made to order here. They're uh, really good burgers. You can add like sauteed onions and mushrooms. So if you're gonna do a burger, this is the place to do it. We have our standard chili cheese fries here that look delicious. These can be gotten at other burger joints in the park, but as Molly mentioned earlier, we're here for the locale. Isn't that right? Yeah, we're here for this. This is the Isla Nublar IPA. It's the specialty beer in Jurassic Park. It's my favorite of the signature exclusive beers in Universal Orlando. It's a fruity IPA. It's delicious. I only have one problem with it, and that's the tap. The tap is the Mosasaurus eating a great white shark. Now, I have a problem with this in general in Jurassic oh Park. Because why would they feed the Mosasaurus a great white shark? The great white sharks are important to the ecosystem of the oceans as we know them. They are an apex predator. They are a keystone species. You need them in... Five hours later. Could they not feed them a cow? The Mosasaurus won't know the difference. So anyway, chili cheese fries. You know, Universal does a good fry. They're the thinner fries. They do a pretty good fry. They're seasoned usually. I've not had these, so I'm excited to give them a whirl. Potato cheers. These are fine. They're a little bit more like classic theme park food, kind of what you expect compared to everything else we've eaten so far. I think they're good. Um, yeah, they're, they're average theme park fare. I think that if you, you're getting what you expect with these chili cheese fries, right? It's not, there's nothing to write home about. This is an old standby. It's reliable. Yeah. I mean, there is good flavor in the chili. There's a little bit of heat coming through. I wish there was more because I'm a spice fan, but I know not everybody is. There is hot sauce and condiments you could add to kick it up a notch. So I think they're good for what they are, but just not as unique as the other snacks we've had. Great. Spud scale, what are you doing? On my scale, five is average. This is distinctly average. I'm giving it a five. I'm going to be a little more generous. I'm going to give it a 6.5. I think they're above average compared to um, other chili cheese fries. I think they're a good shareable. I think if you're not a super adventurous eater, they're a good standby snack, um, but certainly not as unique or as fun as some of the other things we've had and are going to have. Exactly. I think if you want a meal where you read the description, you know exactly what you're going to get, and you won't be disappointed by it. Important. This is what you get. But also get the burgers here and get the sautéed onions and mushrooms because delicious. Is this your first time having the beer? Yeah. It's my favorite. I hope you like it. No pressure. Oh, wow. You can tell it's an IPA right off the bat because of the level of hop that you have. But it's not bitter hops. The difference with the fruity IPA is that this is a citrus hop. And you can tell that immediately. Eight hours later. It's very, very good. Deep flavor. No bitter aftertaste. Very refreshing. 11 out of 10 would recommend. My face just now while Alan was reviewing that was like this the whole time. Because you know like when you have a friend or somebody watch a movie that you love or see something that you love and like you're like I've hyped it up so much I hope it lives up to the hype. That's the pressure I was just under. But as, as Alan just said 11 out of 10. If you are a beer drinker it's a great beer. I like IPAs. I don't love IPAs but this one because of the fruitiness uh, that balances some of that hoppiness. Delicious. Minus that Mosasaurus tap. Oh my god. It's a beer. Pro tip, at Universal they will only hand one beverage to one adult with an ID. So, unlike Disney where one adult can have two, here you need to make sure all the adults are present in your party to get all the beverages that you order. 
Well, I think those are the best potatoes here at Island of Adventure. I would agree. It's time to go to Universal Studios Florida, the other park, but unfortunately the train is down. True. We could always apparate. All right, I got us. Ready? Yeah. We made it. We are in Universal Studios Florida, the other theme park here at Universal at Orlando, that? and uh, it's time for more potatoes. So many more potatoes. More potatoes, let's All go. The potatoes. There are more potatoes to eat. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, this is for Halloween Horror Nights, which does remind me, some of the best potatoes are Halloween Horror Nights exclusives. I'm talking pizza fries, I'm talking twisted taters. What I'm hearing from you is, we have to come back. We're gonna have to come back, but I've already done a Halloween Horror Nights video, so what if, go with me. All right, I'm going. What if we did an ultimate Halloween throwdown, and we went to the three best Halloween events in Orlando in one week to see which one's the best? I mean, I'm in. Interesting. Let's do it. What is happening? Oh my gosh, the SpongeBob characters are dancing. Oh my gosh. They're on roller skates. Oh, it's too much. You know, you see a lot of things in theme parks, but I don't know if I expected a full choreographed dance by the SpongeBob characters, while some of them on rollerblades, to rock lobster. I mean, wow. Spectacular. Oh my God, Squidward. Spectacular. All right, on our way to Springfield for some curly fries and uh, what? Malls, Molly, Molly, Mo Molly, curly fries, curly fries though, curly fries. The dance party. The dance party? Yeah, the dance party. What dance party? I didn't know I needed that in my life. Right? Woo! The DreamWorks dance party, it's so fun. It's in the where Barney used to be, and they rotate characters every 20 minutes, and it's characters from like Trolls and Shrek and Madagascar and other DreamWorks movies. I love it. It's a great character interaction. It's in the air conditioning, and it's just a fun time. Sadly, Guy Diamond wasn't there, but next time. Hey, we got Puss in Boots. And he knew us! He did. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to Springfield, specifically to Fast Food Boulevard. Here inside Fast Food Boulevard, you will find many a Simpsons-themed dining locale. You've got Luigi's Pizza, Lisa's Tea House of Horror, which has like salads and sandwiches, Cletus's Chicken Shack, The Frying Dutchman, Krusty Burger, and even Flamin' Moe's. Once again, we did mobile order, which means we can avoid this line and just go pick up our order. Our order from Krusty Burger was incredibly simple. Curly fries. To be joined by a Duff beer, thank you, Vanna, and a Duff light. So we're looking forward to it. Ah, oh, excellent job. It's like you're a professional. I mean, this is another signature craft beer that you can't get anywhere else. You can get it inside Fast Food Boulevard. You can also get it at the Duff Beer Stand here, but this is a Simpsons exclusive beer. We're taking them dry. I was gonna cheers, but okay. I mean, they're just curly fries, but they're seasoned pretty well. All right, what do you give them on the spud scale? I'm gonna put them above the chili cheese fries yeah. at like a 6-6, six, six, so just barely above. But they have good seasoning, they're cooked well, they're nice and crispy, and who doesn't love a curly fry? It is a good fry. It is a crispy fry. But I think Arby's did it better. Still well seasoned though. What are you giving it? 5.2. Mm -hmm. Tough judge. Cheers. Thanks. I actually think this is the best pairing because of the simplicity. You've got the salty curly fry and then you've got the nice beer to cut the salt. So I actually think the simplicity of beer and french fries is the best. Well, the Duff tastes like a pretty standard lager to me. It's not super heavy, a little malt forward, some light caramel to tones, 
I mean, just a solid beer. If you're looking for a beer that is incredibly drinkable, meaning it is inoffensive and it appeals to a lot of beer drinkers, the Duff beer, and I assume by the same virtue, the Duff beer light is the way to go. Yeah, I've had both. I feel like the Duff beer is kind of like a Heineken and the Duff light is more like a Coors Light or a Bud Light or like a standard American lager. So of the craft beers we've had, of the specialty beers, these are the most similar to something you may have had before if you're a light beer drinker. Uh, so good, but not as fun or unique as the other beers. You think I'm bad? <laughs> you look so good. Cheers. Update. We've been caught in the rain. We were so close to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which is where our last locations were. We're so close to the potato. It seems like the rain is stopping, so should we make a run for the next potato? 100%. The final two potato locations we'll be hitting today are both in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, the Diagon Alley side here in Universal Studios, Florida. The first one right here at this little stand. This is the Shepherd's Pie potato. Fun fact about this one, we got the last one. The last potato. The last spuds for us. It's like they knew we were coming. Yeah, it is a hefty potato. I could work out with this potato. That's... Like I could do like... I feel that. It's at least two pounds. I feel that in my shoulder. It's a big potato. They do. This is the shepherd's pie potato, like Alan said. So you've got the shepherd's pie meat mixture and some cheese on a baked potato. They're called jacket potatoes, which I assume is what they're called in the UK, because that's what they're called here in the in the London section of the Wizarding World. You can also do one with broccoli and cheese. You can do just like a classic baked potato with cheese and sour cream. But we're going the full potato the shepherd's potato. You know how people love hot soup at the theme parks? No. You know what else people love? Hot potato with hot meat and peas. Cheers. Cheers. It's delicious. It is so good. I don't want to like it, but I find myself enjoying it. I love it. Why do I like it? It's so hot. It's very warm. And I'm very sweaty. This is only exacerbating the sweat situation. Yeah, but she double cheesed it. She put cheese on it, then the meat mixture, and then more cheese. And we have to commend the team member for that. I'm getting the spud sweats. I am perplexed. Spud skin. Eight. I love it. Now, caveat, I've gotten the other ones. I've gotten the broccoli cheddar one. I've gotten the classic baked potato. They're just fine. But this one, for some reason, with the re it's really good meat. It's got a lot of flavor from the onion. And then you've got all this cheese, and it's a good, like, huge baked potato. This could easily be a meal split between several people for a snack. Like, it's delicious. It's unique. It's an eight. That's a two-pound potato, for sure. Mm -hmm. I give this one a 7.5. The surprise factor is there. It is high quality. The potato is very good and flaky. They cooked it incredibly well, even if they had to let it keep. Yeah, this baked potato is done beautifully. It is. Uh, flaky, buttery, without any of the butter that you'd expect. Yeah, 7.5. Nobody is more surprised by that than I. Are you okay? I can't stop eating it. And for our final stop on the potato snack crawl, we are headed into my favorite theme park land of all time, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter's Diagon Alley. Magic. Oh, it never gets old. It's so beautiful and magical, and I love it so much. I'm a little full, though, from the meat and potato. Do you want to walk around the shops for a little bit before we get our final spuds? Literally, nothing would make me happy. We have popped into Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, Fred and George Weasley's joke shop. There's all kinds of goodies you can purchase in here. This is probably my favorite shop in the Wizarding World, besides Borgen and Burks. Two very different ends of the scale. And oh my gosh, she's back! In a most hilarious fashion, Fred and George Weasley put Umbridge to work in their store. And she was missing for a long time, and then she came back, and then she was missing again. But I'm glad to see she's here back to work. I love this love potion Danielle Nicole purse. It's so cute. I don't need another Harry Potter purse, but like, adorable. Adorable. 
Oh my gosh. So this is a new returning from a long absence product. And it is postcards with all the different Weasley's Wizard Weezes products. And they were designed by Mina Lima, who is the uh, graphic designer company. It's two artists, Mina and Lima, that did all of the Harry Potter movies. So anything graphic you see in the films from candy wrappers, product wrappers, newspapers, the Marauders map, they designed it. That is an awesome take home. You could be like us and frame them in your house. Yeah. We got some at the Harry Potter store in New York, but that is awesome. Like, do we need this? One of my favorite little details that not a lot of people notice is that the Weasley takes on and off his top hat and the rabbit appears and disappears. Just so cute. I love it. I did a whole video on secrets and details and pro tips and things people don't know about, discounts, free tours, all kinds of things in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter you can check out. But for now, we're going to check out the Leaky Cauldron, especially because I can't be trusted not to buy more things. We are here in the Leaky Cauldron, which is on the Diagon Alley side of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, where you can find more traditional English fare, things like the Plowman's, Bangers and Mash. But we are here for our final two potatoes. Mobile order was available here, so we get to go through this line, which is moving much quicker than the regular line. So again, as a pro tip, if mobile order is available, I highly recommend you take advantage of it. Quick question. Yep. Which of the Harry Potter restaurants do you prefer? I like the three broomsticks. I like the vibe there, the rotisserie chicken, the ribs. So good. I don't care because I'm getting fish and chips either place. They're the exact same. So, but you know the real answer? What? It's a uh, Florian Fortescue's ice cream shop. Fortescue. That's my favorite place to eat in the Wizarding World. I love the vibe in here. I love the forced perspective that makes it look like there really are rooms up at the Leaky Cauldron because this is an inn, of course, as well. And it looks like it goes on forever up there. I. I love the fact that they literally have the leaky cauldron right here. And if you look at the sign outside, it literally drips from the cauldron because it's leaky. It's very, very, very well themed. I think specifically looking at the large chandeliers versus the balconies that you have forces your eye to think that, wow, we really are in a very small space. And the reality is, like, this is just beautifully built. We have mashed potatoes as well as... French fries, or chips, really, is what they would be called. How are you feeling about this? Well, again, these are both side dishes. You can order things on the side. The chips normally come on the side of the fish and chips. The mashed potatoes come, like, topped on, si on top of, like, the cottage pie, the shepherd's pie. But final two potatoes. Spud mania. All right. Mashed potatoes up first. I don't love brown gravy. I love, like, chunky sawmill gravy, but I do love mashed potatoes. This is not an encouraging face. It's not bad. Okay. It is a distinctly brown gravy. And if you like brown gravies, this is for you. It does taste like the color brown. I'm just not a fan of brown gravy. Okay, the, the potato we're biased. Itself, we're yeah, biased. Yeah, the potato itself is good. Well mashed. Light, fluffy, a couple of potato chunks. They did a good job with they're, the potato. They're buttery, the mashed potatoes. Neither of us love brown gravy. It's a little too salty for me. I don't love the flavor of brown gravy. Um, it's fine. Just the potato is good. It's fine. You know what? These mashed potatoes and gravy, they're like the Professor Grubbly plank of the potatoes we've had today. You're not mad about it. They're decidedly fine. But you'd rather have high gravy. And Hagrid is French fry. Shall we? Yeah. Cheers. Dump an offensive amount of that on there for me. Yeah. Ding. Malt vinegar. Amazing. So these are thicker wedge fries. The exterior, well done, crispy, but it's not going to be crunchy to the point where like you're, you feel like it's the top you've had earlier today. Interior is light and pillowy, not overly seasoned, just enough salt. 
I love malt vinegar. Douse them in it, and you will be a very happy camper. What I like about Universal's fries, both the regular form fry as well as the wedge fry in the Wizarding World, is that they are seasoned with more than just salt. It feels like there's a little bit of paprika, there's a little bit of garlic powder on them. They're delicious on their own, but like Alan said, malt vinegar or ketchup or the condiment that you're choosing really elevates them. But I think they are simple yet delicious. Definitely the highest like fry on my list of the day. <laughs> Leaky cauldron, spud scale, let's go. The mashed potatoes, I'm gonna give a four eight. Okay. Below average in my opinion. I am admittedly not a huge brown gravy fan, but I found like it was a little salty. And while the potatoes themselves were good, it was overall the blandest and least delicious dish we had today. I tend to agree. I give the mashed potatoes a 4.3, a 4.3. They are best utilized as a canvas by which other ingredients are highlighted. Like not the shepherd as, pie. Yeah, well. not, not on their own. Yeah, I agree. And the chips, I'm going to give them a 7.6. Yep. Those are my favorite of the fry style dishes we've had today. I think they're seasoned well. I love them on the side of the fish and chips. Um, and they're my favorite just like simple dish we had. Yeah, I think I tend to feel the same way. But I give it a 6.7. Um, it's still just a basic French fry. I will douse mine with malt vinegar. But they were seasoned better than any other French fry we've had today. And that, I think, is deserving of some extra rating. So a 6.7. Well, we've eaten potatoes all day long. Exclusively. <laughs> and we found that the spot of the day was the first place we stopped, which was the green eggs and ham tots. And the pote no mashed potatoes and the leaky cauldron. In the meantime, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for more. Stay tuned for more videos, including a Halloween throwdown around Orlando. Until next time, I'm Alan. I'm Molly. Bye. Bye. It's been magically spudlicious. Spudtacular. I'm going to go ride Fast and the Furious now. Right now? Yeah. I like when The Rock says cookie puss.